my friend, come up higher. So what if we had the ushers bring everybody from the back rows up to the front? <laughs> but Jesus said, choose the lowest place first. We live in a celebrity mad culture. So I'm going to share with you some reflections from Alice Camille. Alice is a Catholic author and I think she has a good sense of the pulse of what we live and experience in our culture today, a celebrity-mad culture that people, many people, want to be seen and to be heard. And so they're on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all sorts of other uh, social media, um, and they're the inviting us those, uh, those uh, things in our media to, to be seen and to be heard, to be recognized. Years back, I remember the weekly Oconto Falls Times Herald had a little article or little column called the Kelly Lake News. So who was visiting who? And if coffee was served, who served the coffee? So this TikTok and Facebook, is not necessarily anything that new, that desire to be seen and to be heard. Reality TV, some of the shows when I pass through the channels, something I tend to avoid. But wanting to be seen, to be heard. Opinion polls, especially the ones that, that we like their opinion, that fit ours. News sources that are tailored to our political preferences. So would it be CNN? or Fox News. Which one do you go to? Well, the one of your political persuasion. So that we only take in what we like, what we believe. And so don't confuse us with objectivity. Just leave us with our point of view. She calls it a national narcissism focusing in on ourselves, on what I know, what I believe. She says it's a dangerous thing. It makes us politically arrogant, ecologically ignorant, relationally handicapped. Relationally handicapped. Have you ever been somewhere where you see other, a group of people at a, at a table and they're all on their phone? And this person might be texting the person on the other side of the table. Relationally handicapped, psychologically self-absorbed. She says many people today are developmentally incapacitated by their inward fascination. The cure to this encroaching disease is known, inexpensive, and available to anyone who wants it. The cure is humility. As we heard in God's word this morning, Jesus invites us in a direction that our culture is counter to our current culture. He asks us to take the lowest chair, not to want to necessarily be seen or heard, to be up front, first in line. Humility, really, if you want to get somewhere in today's world, will humility get you there? Try humility at a party, to stay back, 
to stay quiet, to not offer your opinion or your ideas. Try it in a supermarket parking lot when you want to get the parking space closest to the door. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Medea Goes to Jail. Well, it's about someone taking her parking spot right in front of her. Nothing about humility with Medea. Interesting movies. The saints have a lot to say about humility. We heard it in today's first reading, the book of Sirach. So Ben Sirach and the book of Prophets insist on humility. The Qumran community existed around the time of Jesus, really based their community life on humility. Humilitate in omnibus was the, the cry of the early church fathers, humility in all things, to be humble. Gregory of Sinai, Sinai mentions two uh, brands of humility. First one, he said, regarding yourself lower than others, not putting ourselves ahead of others. And the secondly, he said, to ascribe to God all of your achievements. It's like the fellow who hits the home run and as he comes around to home base, lifts up his finger. It was God who gave him that talent to hit that home run. So to consider ourselves lower than others and to ascribe to God our achievements. Margaret Mary Alacque, a French nun who promoted devotion to the Sacred Heart, gave some practical advice. She said, speak of God only in praise. Speak of your neighbor only with respect. And do not speak of yourself at all, whether ill or well. So here's a challenge to your spiritual temperature on humility. Try spending a whole day without speaking of yourself. To not say what you want, what you like, what you prefer. To spend a whole day without using that capital letter I. I tell you, it's not easy. But to be humble. Francis de Sales wrote a whole treatise on humility, and he suggested that God gives us plenty of space to do some stupid things at times, to remind ourselves of who we are, and to, uh, to cultivate humility through the experience. Have ever tripped or fallen? What's the first thing we do? We look around to see if anybody saw us. So last winter, between the, uh, the church and the rectory, there was some newly fallen snow on some beautiful ice. And Father Bill went whoosh. First thing I did, I lay there and I laughed at myself. And then I got up and, and looked if anybody had seen me. Humility. John Climacus, a seventh century uh, saint, advised cultivating humility by doing manual labor. And so the, the cultural symbol of the humblest person, the ditch digger. Although today probably nobody digs a ditch by hand with a shovel anymore but to cultivate humility by doing manual labor. And Elizabeth Ann Seton, our saint, she prayed one of her prayers, O oh my Jesus, let me mount to thee on steps of humility on which thou camest down to me. 
beautiful prayer, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. So how about betting on humility? Make a wager on humility. The famous uh, wager of Pascal, a French philosopher, he said, bet on God. If God exists, you have done well in believing in him. If God doesn't exist, people will admire you for living a good life. So to bet, to make a wager on humility. That's what Ben Sirah in our first reading does. He says, the humble person is easier to love and so it's better to practice humility. But then he also says the great person who practices humility will find favor with God. Humility. Last Saturday afternoon after our mass, a week ago yesterday, I went to the KI Center for a wedding reception. Got in a little late, but there was still a table with a family that I know that there was still a salad on the, on the plate. And so I ate my meal. Everyone else had pretty much finished. And then the speeches from the best man, the maid of honor, and the dad of the bride, the mother of the groom, and then the, the first waltz. Then the bride stands on a chair and throws her bouquet. But then the bride, they put a chair in the middle. The bride sat down on the chair, and the groom knelt in front of her. Do you know what he did? He didn't take a garter off her leg. He did not. He washed her feet, both of them, put her shoes back on. He sat down, and she knelt and washed his feet, both of them. The entire room was silent. What a beautiful testimony of service, of humble service, of humility. Jesus invites us to not look for places of honor, to take the lowest place, to be humble. Those who are humble will be exalted. And he takes humility one step further. Not only that we strive for humility in our lives, but to share our table with those who are the least and the lowest in our society. A real challenge that our doors, our homes, our tables, our parish be open to and invite the lowest and the least. My friend, come up higher, says the Lord.